here and a proud Valley West, whoops, that just covered up my screen, and a proud Valley West resident. She received a bachelor's and master's degree in sociology from Cal Poly Humboldt. She served three years as an Arcata planning commissioner and is Arcata's newest city council member. She's also coordinator of CUNA, Comunidad Unida del Norte de Arcata, Community United of North America. We welcome you, Kimberly, and uh, look forward to this presentation. Great, thank you. So you're ready for me? We're ready for you, it's all yours, the stage is yours. All right. Yeah, thank you for um, that introduction. Um, so we all know we're here to talk about Valley West transforming a community. You're gonna have to bear with me, we had a little technological difficulty, so I can't see you. I hope you can hear me, because um, I lost my little, couldn't see the screen to unmute myself. So can you hear me okay, Jane? You can, we can hear you perfectly fine. Wonderful, okay. So um, next slide, we're transforming a community and I'd like to, um, well, what is Valley West? It is an ignoble, underappreciated, underreported, misunderstood, and for some generally avoided part of town. A commercial ghetto, Arcata's boomtown, Black Sheep, and even as some disparagingly put it, the gateway to McKinleyville. This is from an editorial from Kevin Hoover from April 17th in 2001. And while we've had a lot of positive changes for many, it still rings true for our Valley West neighborhood in 2023. Next. I wanted to share one of my favorite quotes. I'm passionate about social justice and it's a Martin Luther King Jr. And it says, it is not possible to be in favor of justice for some people and not be in favor of justice for all people. Next. How political and community engagement is helping to build a thriving, better represented and more inclusive Valley West North Arcata community. Next. It takes a village. It takes Kuna, community, city of Arcata, city council, community partners and organizations, as well as local businesses. Next. Cuna. Cuna means cradle in Spanish. Comunidad Unida del Norte de Arcata, or Community United of North Arcata. Cuna was born during the pandemic on Zoom, and COVID had only further highlighted the inequities in Valley West community. Cuna's purpose is to build a better represented community in Valley West. Among some things, uh, a long-term goal for CUNA is to develop community relationships in hopes to collaboratively build a resilient hub that would operate during non-disaster times as a community resource center and a community gathering space so that community members can have access to essential services. The goal is to provide educational resources for all. And in collaboration with the city, CUNA hopes to build trust among city government residents local businesses in Valley West community and expand community and business networks within Valley West to identify community needs in order to create services, outlets, and employment for parents, youth, and other community needs of members who are in need of support. Next. So I'd like to introduce my companeros, meet the team for CUNA, uh, Eva Romero. I've known her since she was uh, four years old. We've been neighbors all this time. She grew up in uh, Valley West community around the corner from me. She is bilingual, Humboldt native, as I said. She holds strong connections with businesses and the Latinx residents in Valley West. She's currently a student at Cal Poly Humboldt, majoring in critical race, gender, and sexuality with an emphasis on Ex, uh, ethnic studies. She hopes to tie lived experiences and connections and education in assisting the forgotten part of Arcata. Uh, my other companera is Laura Munoz. Uh, she is bilingual dancer and a theater maker, educator, somatics practitioner, community organizer. She's with Playhouse Arts Arcata. Kuna is a project of Playhouse Arts Arcata. Uh, Lada loves serving Kuna and is honored to be part of a grassroots effect to make the Valley West community vision for itself a reality. She's in Spain right now, otherwise she would be here, but it's odd hours of the day for her. Um, next, who am I? Uh, being that this isn't about me, I'm going to keep it brief, except to say that I've lived in Arcata 
now more than 35 years and have been a Valley West, West resident almost 20 years. Like many, I came to attend the university where I received my master's in sociology. I have a passion for affordable housing, social justice, race, and ethnic relations. During my time at Cal Poly Humboldt, back then HSU, I had an opportunity to study under a professor and learn about PAR, Participatory Action Research, which I will talk a little bit later about um, because Kuna was the very first ever in Humboldt County to do a participatory budget process. I'm also a mother of a teenage daughter and, as I said, a proud Valley West resident. And like many, I came here for the university but fell in love with Arcata and never left. I have served for three years on the Arcata Planning Commission, and I'm also Arcata's newest uh, city council member. And as I said, I'm a co-coordinator for Kuna, and my passion is serving my community. Next. So change does not happen overnight, and these problems are not going to be solved overnight. There's a lot of work to be done, but it's clear that collective work on the countless individuals who have led significant progress in building a thriving, better represented, represented, and more inclusive Valley West community. Sometimes it does feel insurmountable for every iniquity or justice, ordinary people stepped up to create positive change and to make a difference. Next. So Lucy Salzer, she's a fierce community advocate, and myself, we started writing a Valley West news column for the Mad River News. One of Lucy's first articles was a deep dive into Valley West demographics. So she used the California State Parks Community Fact Finder and selected a one mile diameter, uh, diameter circle that included the majority of the Valley West neighborhood, and this is what she found. Total population, youth, senior, households without access to a car, number of people living in pauper, uh, poverty. Um, and it's it's basically, we have, the, the according to the Public Safety Task Force final report in 2018, um, Valley West is the city's most affordable neighborhood. Next. And like anything, we're gonna have challenges. Uh, Valley West has been considered a disenfranchised, marginalized community. Valley West houses a disproportionately high number of students, minorities, and low-income families. North Arcata includes the largest population of Latinx residents. Many are limited by their English language skills and are low-income or underemployed. This is also an area home to a disproportionate number of unhoused individuals. Most of the adult older population in this area are living on low fixed incomes. Next. And that's where Kuna came in. Our Latinx community often falls between the cracks and the pandemic, as I said, had only further highlighted this gap. Kuna, I said, was born of the pandemic and began as a bilingual volunteer project. Kuna became a de facto resilient hub during the early days of COVID pandemic, helping community members who needed assistance as unpaid but dedicated volunteer community members. Most, uh, more about Kuna's growth and work and vision, I will talk about later in this presentation. Next. Um, and to make sure that I, because I can't see you for some reason, uh, technical, I want to make sure we're on the same slide. Do you see uh, Kuna on Zoom? Jane? Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay. I just want to make sure. So this is the early days of Kuna. Um, and as you can see, we have city representatives, Chief Ahern, Lucy Salazar, Oscar Magoyan, um, and others on here. And of course, uh, my companetas, Lada and Abar Romero, um, and uh, our now mayor, Sarah Schaefer. Next. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Valley West. Um, as I've said, it's been profoundly disenfranchised and geographically isolated. Many of the Valley West residents are socially disadvantaged, and the community has historically lacked representation in the city of Arcata's support and budget processes. But things are changing, and I'm real excited to share uh, later in the uh, slideshow all of the good things that have been happening in Valley West. But just to talk about some of the challenges, we are geographically isolated. We have two home key permanent homeless housing projects on one city block. We have the county's only extreme weather shelter. We have a Boyd Road shelter also in Valley West. We have the county's only harm reduction needle exchange program. 
we have, have the majority of the fast food restaurants in um, Valley West. We have the highest area of crime in Arcata. We have 20 to 30 Carlson Park encampments. Uh, disproportionate, as I've shared, high number of unhoused, large number of older adults on fixed income. We have most of the affordable housing complexes out here. Most of the mobile home parks are out here, and we have a wall of 15 to 20 RV campers permanently parked on Valley East. And it does make it difficult for the residents that live on Valley East apartments to park. Um, next. Some of the things that are lacking or not equitable in Valley West, uh, what it, historically what has been thought of as undesirable has been swept out to Valley West. And as I've said, we're um, looked upon as a food desert because we mostly have fast food chains. We do not have a public bathroom in Valley West, North Arcata at all, not even a porta potty. Um, we don't have any access to drinking water. So our unhoused community has to go into one of the shopkeepers um, and try to get water for themselves or for their canine companions. We don't have water at any of our parks even. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about how we're keeping our fruit trees watered out there. We need a designated Arcata Police Department officer in Valley West. And even better, we could use a substation. We used to have um, a designated Valley West police officer. And as you all know, um, we've been short. It's been difficult to recruit um, officers. Um, and I'm excited to say we are almost fully staffed. Um, and so, yeah, more to come. Um, and segregation. Most of the unhoused community is in Valley West, and we already know the outcomes of segregation. It neither serves the target population nor the community because um, they're, they're going to be resented by their very own community. Um, and so I, I have some solutions for that. And we'll talk about that later. And we could really use our very own combat, uh, community ambassador program. Um, shopkeepers have been complaining that the bathrooms have become showers and it's making it uninhabitable for patrons. And we can do better by our unhoused neighbors. Needles and other drugs are commonly found in the business re restrooms. Um, so we have to come up with some long-term solutions. Next. Um, as I've said, we are geographically isolated. We're almost like an island. Valley West is isolated from the rest of the city by Highway 101 and 299. Valley West residents have very limited recreational opportunities with barriers to walking and biking to the downtown Arcata. You literally take mm -hmm. your life in your own hands if you want to try to make it to Arcata without a vehicle. And as I keep mentioning, we're a food desert and many residents don't own their own vehicle. So they're stuck out here, um, you know, at fast food and because it costs less, you know, to eat that way. Um, and we don't have any bus service on Sunday. We have limited bus service in general, but no buses on Sunday. Next. So here's a Valley West um, area map. Valley West, most people think Valley West is just the hotel strip or the horseshoe Valley West and Valley East, but it actually includes all of Giantoli, all the way to Lazy Jane, our Chamber of Commerce Visitor Center, Tony's Drive-In, the Bureau of Land Management, and Mad River Gardens. And then to the other side of Giantoli, it goes all the way down Boyd Road to Daisy Supply, which is the former 3G's A and Grain, and all the way to the other side of Boyd Road to include Danko's Housing, Courtyard Apartments, as well as Humboldt Unified School District, Bus Yard next to Sinyi Martial Arts. It's a 408 acre neighborhood. Next. Um, so housing, are we looking at a housing screen with people on the left side, Jane, just to make sure we're still yes, yes, perfect? We are. So um, we have three of the largest mobile home parks in Arcata in Valley West. Um, and as you can see, that's an aerial view. The Valley West neighborhood is a mix of medium and high density housing with three largest mobile home parks in Arcata found in Valley West, town and country, Valley West Mobile Home States and Lazy J Ranch Senior Housing. Valley West also includes a large subsidized housing complex. The courtyard has a hundred units. The shelter, the Boyd Road shelter is eight to 12 people. River Community Homes is 40 units. There are many condominiums and over 15 one to two bedroom complexes that are adjacent to Valley West, Valley East Boulevard. Um, and then of course we have the two new uh, housing projects to include Home Key Homeless Housing on um, the motel strip on Valley West Boulevard. Next. 
businesses uh, uh, and taxes. So the Valley West neighborhood is heavily weighted by businesses. Most people don't know that we have over 70 businesses, actually 77 are currently in operation according to the city of Arcata Finance Department. Valley West Shopping Center alone includes 20 businesses. The economic development plan for 20 10 to 2014 states of the city's 15 neighborhoods downtown and valley west are consistently responsible for the greatest share of sales tax revenues between 2004 and 2008 the business groups that generated the most sales tax revenues for the city were business industry fuel and service and westerns and hotels that's valley west in the fiscal year of 2020 and 2021 these 70 businesses provided almost a million dollars in sales tax recreation next sorry recreation so uh, in 2010, Parks and Recreation Master Plan stated that Arcata has several indoor facilities that provide recreational, social, educational, and cultural activities within the community. None of these seven listed pri are uh, private and city facilities or the four pools are located in or anywhere near Valley West. Historically, no Parks and Recreation regularly scheduled programming has been carried out in Valley West for the many children and youth living in this neighborhood. And I'm excited to say that's changing now too. Next, art. So according to the City of Arcata's Draft Strategic Arts Plan 2021 to 2024, the mapping of Arcata's cultural assets clearly shows that the majority of opportunities to experience the arts in Arcata are centralized within historic downtown. Downtown film, performing arts venues, various places of visual public art, and festivals and events are known for their walking distance. And this is not the case for outlay, uh, outlying neighborhoods, which the, uh, house the majority of low-income student and BIPOC residents. The Valley West area specifically has limited access to art opportunities. The cluster nature of cultural assets around the city contribute to spatial, cultural, and aesthetic inequalities in the Arcata community. And until only recently, two public pieces of art could be found in Valley West at the roundabouts in Giantoli, Luna by Mort Scott and River Steps by Bob Benson. Kuna's mural project from the community's participatory bu uh, budget process has brought more art and culture to the community, I'm excited to say. And these projects were community led and painted, um, were, and were made possible by uh, ARPA funds, the American Rescue Program Act, which was allocated by the city of Arcata. So many blank canvases surround the Valley West Shopping Center and there are ongoing talks about potential more murals in these spaces. Next. Crime. According to the Public Safety Task Final Report in 2017, Valley West represents and presents the highest physical danger to residents, city employees, and visitors. Throughout 2021, this dangerous description continues. The Public Safety Committee on October 2021 meeting notes reported that the three areas with the largest number of police calls were Valley West, 600 F Street, and Mad River Hospital, which of course is also in the Valley West perimeter. Police Chief Ahorn provided time data for Valley West that the Public Safety Committee had requested for the years of 2017 to 21. And you can see the number, um, which has doubled uh, in 2021 from 2017. Um, so sometimes things get better before they get or, or get worse before they get better. Total incidents have registered by the Arcata Police Department um, continue or, or include the year 2021 um, ending on December 15th. So that number could even be higher. Um, we know that during the holidays, crime also goes up. It must be noted that these high numbers of police incidents for Valley West did not include those registered at Bad River Hospital, which has included assaults on hospital staff, along with violent crimes associated with housing and substance abuse issues. The Public Safety Committee has formed a specific Specific Valley West subcommittee, and I'm looking forward to more analysis from this committee, um, and and will they'll report on a future Valley West. And I, I'm going to put this in the Mad River News Valley West News column when we get that information. So, in conclusion, this smattering of numbers tell a lot about the multifaceted Valley West neighborhood, from the lack of recreational opportunities or public art to the high number of police calls and tax revenue. Next. 
So uh, we do, you know, as I mentioned, a substantial number of campers on Valley West. We have an average of 15 to 20 campers parked for weeks and months at a time on Valley East. This wall of RVs creates blind spots, drugs and alcohol needles picked up both weekly and monthly during our community cleanups and families and children don't feel safe on the sidewalk on Valley East and Valley West. Next. Um, so I wanna just to give you a little look-see um, what that looks like. And, and first, let me see, I don't begrudge anyone a place to park. In fact, I'm a big advocate for the unhoused community and being an advocate for the community and for the unhoused community, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. I think that it's time we make our unhoused community a priority because everyone deserves a home. And on any given day, we have 15 to 20 RVs all on one city block. We are likely to have more RVs and campers than our Cata House Partnership Safe Program, parking program that costs over $700,000 to fund annually. We only have our community volunteers to clean up and deal with the aftermath of broken bottles, litter, human excrement, and needles. This wall of RVs and campers block pedestrians from walking on the street and bicyclists from utilizing the bike lane due to the camper pop-out extension going out to the street and into the bike lane. The vehicles usually extend beyond the street with access, uh, you know, excess vehicles and tents and car camping parked in the back of the shopping center not necessarily good for business. These folks need a place to go that and that they're not constantly asked to move and a place to call home. Next. So speaking of vehicles, I'd like to talk a little bit about our transportation challenges and I'm looking at the clock. So I think I'm gonna go through these a little bit faster. Um, you can talk to, at the end. Um, please feel free to put some uh, questions in the chat and we'll discuss that. But I just wanna say that Valley West has some troubled transportation system and it needs grave attention. Next. Um, some of the things that are happening out here is that Valley West vehicle optimized thoroughfares. This was built as a, 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 a mobile car truck stop, right? I mean, everybody's out here with the uh, hotels and motels and trucks. And um, we have some legacy design issues, including the features that punish pedestrians with awkward, dangerous situations. If you walk, there's no clear, safe route in or out of the Arcata neighborhood. Next. Um, Valley West is cut off, as I said, from 101 and 299. These two freeways present significant barriers from leaving and entering if you don't have a private automobile. And while bikes are technically allowed on the highways, riding them is a pretty dangerous and scary prospect. Next. Um, Valley West has an internal circulation dominated by the Giantoli Lane Valley West Boulevard. It's a loop consisting of wide roadways that encourage high vehicular speeds and have few safe pedestrian crossings. Next. Planning for improved intersect crossings and street lighting should be a priority for the project. The community has expressed interest in educational programs for bicycling and neighborhood speed watch. Cow walks and safe rec are also recommended. The city of Arcata too, uh, will explore the feasibility of expanding the existing bike share to uh, Valley West neighborhood. And I'm happy to say that that has already happened. Um, this recommendation came to fruition. But a lot of people call Giantoli the Arcata Raceway. So next, um, lots of suboptimal situations. 2018, a team led by UC Berkeley Safe Transportation Research and Education called Safe Trek conducted a pedestrian and bicycle study in Valley West. Observations along the frequently used paths in Valley West included poor or missing sidewalks, lack of signage, difficult marked and unmarked crossings, challenging roundabouts, inadequate street lighting, and other related issues. Pedestrian visibility, proper signage and path connectivity are key factors among these problems. Next. So if you look over here, this is the overpass to people like the students who would frequently ride their bike to Cal Poly Humble would go over the overpass and then go to West End Road, but there is no sidewalk on the overpass, just a bike lane in the road designated by a painted line. I will not allow my teenager to ride her bike out here. Next. Um, and if you look at, as you go down Valley West, you can see it's excessively broad. Human dwarfing Valley West Boulevard is not pedestrian safe. It is a, we're in desperate need of flashing crosswalks. Otherwise, it's a game of Frogger out there. And I'm excited to say that Emily Sankorn from Environmental Planning has um, 
written a grant and hoping that we're going to be awarded. It's a Clean California grant, and amongst other things, it will include a flashing sidewalk. Next. Um, so, yeah, and there's a lot more recommendations that will be needed to make this a walkable, bikeable area. And I also want to note that um, all of this information um, was presented by Colin Fisk with Coalition for Responsible Transportation Priorities in our Valley West news column in the Mad River Union on March 2nd, 2022. Next. So as I said, sometimes things get worse before they get better, but for now, I'm gonna focus on the positive. Next. So how do you change and transform a community? First, you gotta be a good neighbor. You use your voice, you give your time. Next. And to change and transform a community, you must value its people. You must can be committed to the community. You must engage the community and you gotta overcome the naysayers because you will face significant obstacles and they must see progress Help them accomplish more than what they've ever dreamed possible. We're dreamers out here. We're resilient. You must improve the people's self-image. No longer the forgotten part of Arcata, Arcata's ugly stepsister or the other Arcata. You must celebrate continual improvement. And we are improving in, and we're gaining momentum. And finally, struggle is necessary for strength. So just don't give up on us. Next. Get involved. So to get involved, get on a school board, join your Condor Homeowners Association. Lost my little. Join a board or a commission, attend city council meetings, and finally run for city council or town council. Next. So Laurel Tree Charter School, um, had an opportunity, I had an opening as a, on the board. So I became a board member. I joined my homeowners association. I became a wellness center board member when they were out here in Valley West. I'm a community volunteer, a community organizer and advocate. I belong to the homeless housing working group. I'm also on the Arcata House Partnership as a city liaison next. Um, and political engagement is what this is all about and community engagement to build a, re a better represented Valley West. So, you know, uh, people on the internet, you know, and I'm looking like, how do you transform a community? They said, well, get involved in local government. Um, I wanted to have a voice for Valley West. So I got on the planning commission and I've been on the, I was on the planning commission. I served for over three years. Next. Um, and then I ran for city council, not once, not twice, but three times. And that's not counting when I threw my name in the hat for appointment for an early vacancy on council. Uh, I've been politically engaged. Our companados with CUNA are engaged. Next. And while I represent all of our kids, it's no secret that I have a passion for Valley West. There has never been in the history of city council, somebody from Valley West. So I'm um, thankful and grateful for my constituents for um, voting for me and getting me a seat at the table. Next. And finally, just to say, if you don't first succeed, try, try and try again. So what is the main purpose of community change? Um, community change builds the power of low-income people, especially people of color, to win changes on issues that impact their lives. By fusing the power of organizing ideas and politics, we fuel bold and enduring movements for that big win. Next. Uh, in the summer of 2021, Kuna adopted Carlson Park and began holding regular community cleanups at the park and surrounding neighborhood. The goal was to hold events at Carlson Park for local residents. It um, was these efforts that set the stage for several grants to be awarded to the city of Arcata to develop Carlson Park. Next. And there's some pictures of Kuna at Carlson Park cleanups. Next. Uh, we just in the news, community brings uh, cleanups, bring community together. And there's just some pictures of the various cleanups that we've had. That's in the Mad River Union. Next. 
uh, Kuna held uh, has had momentum and there's simply no stopping us. As you can see there, we have Ken Amick with Community Pride and Peace, CPP, Dilo Fridas, who's the city of Arcata senior planner, and Gillen Martin, our uh, former community development specialist. I say former because she's off to grad school to learn more and come back and give more to Arcata. And then Oscar McGoin with North Coast Growers Association and formerly with Cooperation Humboldt and Acuna Coordinator. Next. A big shout out to Lothias. Uh, they were feeding all the community volunteers for free. It was a wet, cold, and tough day, but our bellies were full of warm, yummy Mexican food. Next. Uh, community volunteers stepped up in numbers. As I said, the community pride and peace. And um, a favorite of mine, Anne Frank, no one has ever been uh, become poor by giving. Next. In the news, Kuna brings positive change and hope to Valley West, Mad River Union. Next. Here's some uh, Carlson Park events. Kuna formally adopted Carlson Park and hosted uh, cleanup events, mobile clinics, vaccination clinics, playhouse arts migrations, a circus, Las Calabasas and Brujas, which is a Halloween celebration Latinx style. We've had artisan markets, live music, a disaster preparedness block party, Tiangi's Latinx uh, style flea markets, and we've helped facilitate other groups to use Carlson Park space. Um, these initial efforts are intended to create culture, bring people out and listen to people's feedback and contributions. Next. Um, and of course we have um, some people that you might recognize, Emily Sinkhorn with the white sunglasses out getting her dance on. And uh, to the left, we have some dancing there of Elizabeth Connor. Next. Sorry, my clicky thing is seemingly not working. There you go. All right. So here's some more pictures of Shoshana, Coast Central, Los Theas, um, and, and biking out in Carlson Park and doing celebrations next. Uh, and I talked about the Latinx style Halloween celebration, La Capalesas and Brujas, and I just butchered that. My apologies to those Spanish speakers out there. Next. Uh, and some more pictures of that fun event. Next. Next. Um, are we looking at the Carlson Park Bike Rodeo? Jane? Yes. 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 Perfect. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure because I cannot see what you guys are showing, unfortunately. So this is a picture of the Carlson Park Bike Rodeo. <laughs> Typically, it's been held in Maine, Arcata. Um, and last year, they gave us a shot at it. It was a huge success. And they've decided that we're going to rotate it now every other year. So we'll do it again next year. Next. And um, some pictures here of uh, folks, Latinx community came out in numbers, uh, making headway, gave out free helmets. We had all kinds of fun things to do next. This is a pedal powered smoothie maker. They had two size spikes, one for children, one for adults. And it was a big hit for youth and adults alike. Next. So uh, Arcata City Council priority projects for 2022, Carlson Park and improving opportunities in Valley West were among the priorities. Uh, some main components was river access trail improvements, including an accessible trail to the river look to a river lookout, a parking lot at the end of Carlson Park Drive, which will include some EV chargers and a non-motorized boat staging area, city maintenance uh, area behind the park at the gate. Next. Uh, and I'm so excited to share, and I'm sure most of you guys have already heard that we got a $691,000 grant for Carlson Park uh, Development. The city um, received this grant. It's uh, the first public access or the only public access to the Mad River within city limits, enhancing the Carlson Park and improving opportunities in Valley West. As I said, we're amongst the city council priorities in 2022. Um, the Wildlife Conservation Board approved the city of Arcata for the grant uh, and then the development of free public river access at Carlson Park will provide the only official access, as I said, for fishing, swimming and water play. Funds will be used to create a 3,800 feet of trail. I might add this is going to be trilingual. It'll be in English, Spanish, and the Wiat language. It's going to have an ADA compliant river lookout, a pathway to carry kayaks, canoes, and paddle boards, an observation deck, uh, accessible parking, 
and um, we'll also be taking care of the invasive species and planting uh, native species for revegetation. Um, State Parks Rural Recreation and Tourism Grant and another grant through the Wildlife Conservation Board Access Project is going to make all this happen next. And then this is the other grant I was just talking about, $800,000, well, almost, yeah, a little more than that. Um, and this is going to be uh, for a playground ex uh, with accessible resurfing scene, a picnic area, a multi-use pickleball court, which will also be used for other types of compatible pet play. As I mentioned, there'll be an area for electrical charging, restrooms, yay, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, and water fountains. So it'll be the first park that we have water and there will be permanent restrooms. And there's likely gonna be an addition of a small skate feature to the west of the special event area. Um, and so, yeah, this is super important for health related economic goals. This is a boon, not just to Valley Westers, but all of Arcata, as well as tourism. Hopefully they'll stay an extra day uh, when they see the beautiful uh, Mad River. Also I might mention that this Mad River is a riparian uh, outdoor education uh, site for Laurel Tree Charter School, as well as Cal Poly Humboldt. So, um, you know, improving this and making the trails accessible are really important. Next. Um, and then here is another additional $1 million for a total of $2.5 million for improvements. Senator McGuire um, secured this from a state general fund. And um, generations of kids are going to be able to play. McGuire said generations of families will be able to wander trails and discover the Mad River ecosystem without ever having to get into a car. I am proud to say that CUNA was instrumental in getting these three grants, the adoption of the park in the summer of 2021 and the Car uh, Carlson Park cleanups, as well as all of the events set the stage for these grants. So um, at a previously unused park. Next. Uh, more in the news talks about Valley West. Springtime brings a slew of events and fresh opportunities. Next. Um, let's see. We have uh, more. This is the bike rodeo. Next. Uh, we had an artisan market at the formerly Red Roof Inn, which was a huge turnout. Live music, food, fun. People came from everywhere, not just Arcata, McKinleyville, Blue Lake, etc. Next. Valley West is no longer the forgotten part of Arcata. Lots of exciting things are happening in Valley West. Next. Um, I want to talk about the that Kuna was the first to bring the participatory budget process to Humboldt County, where the residents got to help decide what improvements they wanted to see in their community. And again, this was allocated by the city of Arcata and funded by the American Rescue Act. Uh, the money for fifteen thousand uh, dollar ARPA funds Why was behind. Uh, say that again. For beautification, okay, never mind. And connectivity. Next, so um, hopefully we're looking at a green and white design process for uh, the participatory budget process. Just want to mention it was developed in the nineteen eighties by the Brazilian Work Party. And it just made sense with our Latinx roots to uh, bring this to the Valley West community. The processes are in design to involve those who've been left out of traditional methods of public engagement, such as low-income residents, non-citizens, and youth. Uh, in Valley West case, we have been traditionally underserved and disenfranchised. The participatory budget usually results in a more equitable public spending, greater government transparency and accountability, and an increased level of participation. Next. Oh, and of course, Kuna was the first to bring the participatory budget to Humboldt County. Uh, this is in the news again. Valley Westers get to help decide what improvements they want for their neighborhood. Next, uh, more uh, real money, real power for Valley West residents by directing resources to the communities with the greatest needs. Next. Uh, this is a picture of our voting event. Next. This is a ballot. Uh, voting, uh, we had in-person, online, phone, text, and email. I even had somebody stop me at the grocery store and give me their voting preferences. And of course, I had my ballot on me, so we just filled it out right there. Next. Uh, here's some pictures of uh, folks at the ballot table. 
uh, local residents and Lorna Brandt was our DJ. So it was super exciting. Next, uh, more pictures of community residents. You might recognize Emily Sinkhorn in there taking a peek. And I think that's Joanne McGarry in the back. She came to check it out and observe. Next, these are uh, local resident uh, Dwight. He's a bus driver for uh, Mad River Transit, now Humboldt Transit Service. And also we have uh, two other Valley West residents. They're doing their ballots. Next. And um, yeah, we have our DJ L Boogie at our uh, participatory voting uh, day. Next. So participatory budget, these are the outcomes. We planted five fruit trees. We had outdoor picnic amenities, new picnic table, barbecue, grill, trash and recycling cans. Uh, we did a Tiangi's Latin style flea market. We did teen meetups, dance classes at Steps Dance Studio at the Valley West Shopping Center. These were free to the community, children's theater. We had the Rebound Basketball Court Mural, which is uh, by Ink People. Uh, the mural project uh, was community led. We had five in individual murals. That was uh, time was donated by the mural man, Ben Goulart. Next. Here's some pictures of the dance classes at the Valley West Dance Steps Dance Studio next. Here's some, uh, the these youth were at the park kind of getting themselves in trouble. We put paintbrushes in their hand, they got to work. They came back every day till the uh, Valley West had, uh, this is actually hieroglyphics and it says Valley West in Mayan hieroglyphics. So, uh, and Ben uh, Goulart, AKA uh, the mural man has donated countless hours of his time uh, to lead the community workshops, and we are forever grateful. Next, this is uh, Cesar Chavez, Power to the People. Next, we have some Latinx uh, youth working on the, uh, again, the Mayan hieroglyphic. We have a mariachi band. We have local resident uh, Joanne Parkhurst and Naomi Silvertree, uh, who also live off of Howland Drive out here in Valley West. Um, and unfortunately, I found out yesterday that our mariachi band mural was defaced with graffiti. So um, uh, Ben Goulart, the mural man, is going to come to the rescue and, and try to fix that. So uh, next. So, uh, yeah, just some more pictures of our uh, murals next. Here's the basketball project, which was really unique. Uh, this is Ben Funke with Ink People uh, Rebound. Uh, basketball murals and um, the residents were paid to do art to paint the community mural we had teenagers older adults and the unhoused community paint and participate and you know you get all this and you got paid too so it was really exciting they're waiting for more uh, paid positions to come so we're working on that next um, so this uh, is one of my favorite murals. It was painted by the former houseless residents, the Grove. Uh, the Grove mural project is up front and center at the Valley West Park on Holland Drive. We had several folks in wheelchairs. Uh, ben Goulart made it happen so that nobody was left out. Anyone that wanted to participate could. And after all our efforts, we shared a wonderful lunch and discussed future workshops for our newly housed residents. So if you're an artist and want to volunteer your time and teach a workshop, please get a hold of me. Next. Uh, and here's a picture of the Grove murals, people at work. Next. Uh, Maureen McKay celebrated the unveiling of the Grove mural with a special poem that she shared with the community. Next. We had over 40 people in the rain in attendance for the Grove mural unveiling. Neither rain, sleet, or snow was going to stop this community-led mural unveiling. Again, a big shout out to Ben Goulart, the mural man, for volunteering all of his time to teach these mural workshops. Next. We had, uh, oh, here's the unveiling, ta-da. <laughs> All right, um, next. So the Latinx uh, style flea market. So picture yourself at a traditional flare, uh, flea market with a Latinx flare. flare. The smell of fresh tamales, uh, homemade Mexican candy, Latinx music, and bubbles galore, next. Uh, here's some pictures of fun, uh, youth, bubbles. We have Ebar Romero, uh, Kuna Kuna coordinator, uh, peddling free smoothies for all. Shoshana, uh, Central de Pueblo's out there. Next. 
A big shout out to Hum Bubbles because they brought their team to keep us in bubbles all day. And it was bubblicious, glorious day. And they did it all for free. They love to give to the community. So give them a shout out for us. Next, just more pictures of, uh, you know, Mexican corn, youth enjoying the day. We, uh, rest of our Arcata was apparently foggy, but we got the sun. You had to break out the sunscreen, in fact. We had um, the Wonder Wagon out there for kids next. Thanks to the Rotary Club of Arcata, Sunrise families were able to take a break, get cool, receive first aid if needed. And, you know, while I said the sun wasn't out in the rest of Arcata, it did cooperate for us Valley Westers. So you had to take a break and reapply your sunscreen at the comfort station that was there for you. They even had a, ba a baby changing station if needed. Next. Valley West artist Naomi Silvertree showed off her incredible handmade all occasion card. So if you missed her cards next month, we're going to be having a artisan market sponsored by River Community Homes on Allen Drive. Humboldt Literacy Project and Humboldt County Library signed up uh, for children to have summer reading program and gave out free books. Face painting by Lena, uh, Leila, excuse me, uh, uh, was a big hit for kids and adults alike. Linda Kosop, which is a local artisan, she paints and weaves, showed her work at the uh, Tiangis next. Um, the Unicorn P Pinata, of course, was a big hit with the kids, as well as Cal Poly Humboldt's Mariachi Band, Fun in the Sun, seated on billowy hay bales and enjoying some local Latinx cuisine. Who could want anything more? Next. So uh, we are now in round two of our participatory budget process, and it has begun. We have hosted uh, for the new residents at the Grove, Cal Poly Humboldt, staying at the temporary housing at the Comfort Inn. Students eighth through 12th grade got to weigh in from Laurel Tree Charter School. We had a Latinx community brainstorming session, courtyard apartments, and Lazy J seniors got to brainstorm at the Arcata Chambers Visitor Center. Stay tuned as we will be having more in-person brainstorming events, as well as uh, online and special brainstorming events for Valley West businesses as well. Next, uh, this is some pictures of the Comfort Inn Cal Poly Humboldt. This is some folks at the Grove having a great time sharing food and brainstorming. Oh, next, sorry. Are we looking at the brainstorming Grove Supportive Housing Project? Anyone? Yes. Yes, perfect, all right, next. Uh, Laurel Tree Charter School brainstorming session. You know, wait, they were amazed that they could vote because they weren't 18 yet. So I hope this sets the stage for future political and great uh, engagement when they are uh, old enough to vote in an election. Next. Uh, Lazy J seniors are always engaged and this was no exception. Thank you ladies for being involved in volunteering for Kuna cleanups and weekly food pantry at the Arcata House Partnership. Next. Um, so we are developing relationships and partnerships with the businesses. Many Valley West businesses are already engaged with Kuna, Raise Food Place, Steps Dance Studio, Roundtable, The Country Store, Patriot, and Chevron Gas Station, McDonald's, Cash Advance, Riptide Cafe, Jitterbean, and more. Kuna hopes to help facilitate a formation of a Valley West business district, much like Arcata Main Street. The goals of a business group or district would be to address issues of safety, filling vacant storefronts, trash, and community relationships. So Kuna aspires to identify business leaders who are willing to take on an active role in group management and leadership. Next. Oh, and, you know, 75, over 75 businesses in Valley West, I might mention. Uh, this is a picture. I had a blast painting the Christmas windows at the Valley West Shopping Center with Shoshana Rose, Arcata's best ballroom princess and all-time favorite for Arcata's children. And as always, Shoshana brought merriment wherever she goes, her many talents. Next. Uh, so Valley Westers helped to spend, uh, uh, help spend to make change and uh, uh, pitch in for cleanups. So more pictures next. And uh, the team cleanup, we have Gellin and we have Dwight Winnegar, who is uh, one of our bus drivers and others that you might recognize from the community next. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, yeah, so this is a before and this is an after. Next. Valley West Clean the Side events. Uh, big thanks from our regulars from Lazy J, Nancy Peltier, Lisa Peltier, Jillian Sparrow, 
Suzanne Castiglione and others. Also thanks to Cal Poly Humboldt Resident Advisor at the Comfort Inn and of course our community advocate, Joanne McGarry. We love our community and it shows. You put your money where your mouth is or your action and uh, words into action. Next. So a big shout out to Will Monk, Naomi Silvertree, Alex Robertson, who's also a Valley West resident and community ambassador for always supporting our cleanups, volunteering at our events, and always supportive of Kuna's endeavors. Next. Big shout out to the community-minded Arcada Vineyard, who has come to many community cleanups, both at Carlson Park and Valley West Clean the Sidewalk events. Next. Uh, here's Community Pride and Peace. Next. Uh, weights and measures. We gathered over 600 pounds this day. We gave out gift cards from Riptide Cafe, Jitterbean, Ray's Food Place, and Humboldt Pet Supply. I might mention the biggest winners who collected the most trash were from our unhoused community, and they chose a gift card from Humboldt Pet Supply to take care of their canine companions. Next. Uh, we had both our Mayor Sarah Schaefer and Vice Mayor Meredith Matthews join us during our community cleanup. Next. And there's Sarah, and of course, community development specialist, uh, Jill, Gill and Martin, dueling it out. Next. It's a family affair with Valley West resident and City of Arcata community ambassador, Alex Robertson. She brought her husband and her children. Alex is also on the steering committee for CUNA. And of course, she's a re regular at the Valley West cleanups. Next. Sorry, my next is not happening. Uh, here's Pack Out Green Team also doing a Valley West cleanup. They mostly uh, focused on the boulevard and around the shopping center and the back of Valley East. Next. Uh, we table as much as we can, Kuna, to get out in the various community events and when the opportunity arises. So we are at Redwood Rocks, Tiangis at the Creamery. We were at the Decolonizing uh, Economic Summit on Earth Day at Pearson Park. And uh, this spring, uh, this last spring, be sure to look at uh, for us at this year's Playhouse Arts Migrations, which is going to start at Valley West Carlson Park. We'll be tabling this year at the Festihondo, sponsored by El Centro Academico Cultural at the Na, uh, National Observance of Hispanic Serving Institution Week and the Latinx Heritage Month at Cal Poly Humboldt, uh, September 11th through the 15th. Next. Uh, and then we now have a Valley West play group on Sundays from 10 to noon, sponsored by Cumbre Humboldt, aka Lucy Salazar, who I've mentioned is a fierce uh, Valley West advocate. Next. Uh, we had a welcome Cal Poly Humboldt community barbecue to Valley West. Wesley Chesbro and Home Away From Home gang came and helped out. Uh, we had, uh, this This was a free barbecue and we are gearing up for our second annual Welcome to Valley West community free barbecue. Uh, again, and this will be welcoming not only Cal Poly Humboldt, but both of our new home key residents. And uh, we need more volunteers, so come join the party. Next. Uh, this is a picture of um, Dilo Fritas. She is a senior planner and she is our uh, barbecue extraordinary. Uh, she's going to also be barbecuing at this year's on uh, August 27th. So hope to see you there next. Uh, faces of the unhoused, you know, living in Valley West, you get to know the people who your unhoused community by name, and they know you by name. So I did a two part article in the Mad River Union to put a face on these. Um, his name was Pops. And um, I saw him a lot because I live in a condo at the end of the cul-de-sac on Valley West Boulevard. He was in a wheelchair and um, he froze to death. Uh, at the encampment in Carlson Park. And um, this shouldn't happen. Next. So uh, I want to talk about something positive, Project Home Key, which is the state program for permanent support of homeless housing. It wasn't in time for POPs, but it was in time for many others. Um, and so now, actually, this is a little dated because we are now past June. We have 160 to 200 new previously unhoused residents um, that have a home. Next. Uh, and, and Project Ohonki added 140 units, so some will be double occupancy, some will be for families. Next. 
And in addition to home key, we're going to be getting an additional 100 to 150 new students in Valley West in the fall. And, you know, originally, as you've heard, they were going to have four motels converted to temporary student housing. They have said they have overestimated. So they're going to be doing just one hotel. It might be different next year, though. Next. Uh, just some pictures of the major housing crisis and Cal Poly's humble, uh, you know, expansion next. Um, I'm going to go through because I'm looking at the time. It's one and I want to leave some time for questions next. We did a disaster preparedness block party. We invited organizations that were active in disaster preparedness and related services. We helped foster connections between the neighborhood, emergency services, and volunteer organizations so that we can all feel safer and more prepared to help each other out. Next. Um, we began efforts on our disaster block party. Um, and what we found was that folks wanted a resilient hub. Next. And this is a little bit about um, the resilient hub. If you want to know more about that, we're going to be sending out a newsletter. Get a hold of Kuna. We'll get one in the mail for you. As part of our research, we conducted both empathy uh, interviews and survey questionnaires, which we were able to hand out at our disaster preparedness block party. Next. And um, here's some results of that um, survey. Next. And next, I'm gonna go fast. So have you ever experienced a disaster? 84% yes. Next one, how do you feel about the community's preparedness? Less than half were well prepared. Next, is your household uh, individually prepared for a uh, disaster? Less than half again, we're not prepared. Next, what skills do you have? And you can look through there and see that, you know, some people, 4% had a fire extinguisher, 9% had first aid. So we need to step up, not just for Valley West, but all of Arcata and disaster preparedness. Next. And I'm sorry, my great Dane might be in the picture. I can't tell, but she's nosing me. So what is most important uh, to you during times of disaster? And you can look and see what they felt was important. Next. Um, and then finally, were there members in your household that were vulnerable or needed extra assistance during the disaster? More than half, almost 60% said yes. Next. So uh, our, our empathy interviews were 20 minutes long, human designed, next. Uh, just recently, this is a quote, the power outage. Uh, there were many places in uh, Eureka and McKinleyville that had phone charging food and emergency equipment, but in this area, um, there are many Hispanics. And I think that would really help them greatly. Next, uh, we need a safe place to be. Uh, under during earthquakes, a safe place to go through tsunami and some type of generator for when the power is out to keep food from going bad next. Uh, my mom only speaks Spanish. Whoops, lost my thing. Uh, she migrated from Mexico at a very young age. This is uh, when we first experienced earthquakes. Um, it was nothing that my mom had ever experienced before. And she had no idea what to do during these times of emergency next. Uh, one person said they think it would be a great opportunity for the community because we don't see resources like this here. We always hear about them being downtown. Next. So as you all know, uh, December 20th, right before the holiday, we had a 6.4 earthquake on the Richter scale. Next. And we are hoping to do a follow-up survey after uh, the earthquake so we can see what uh, what changes. People, um, I'm sure, um, post-survey are going to have some more insight to what they're going to need next. So uh, Kuna has uh, was awarded a pg e grant to do a feasibility study for a resilient hub. Next. Um, and I'm just going to go through these. So, uh, you know, what's this that were set apart geographically and demographically, uh, primarily affordable and low income housing that abuts industrial areas, motels and franchise. We only have one play playground, no community gathering place or recreational facilities within walking distance. And while we don't have a uh, community gathering place inside, we are gonna be getting a whole bunch of amenities at the new Carlson Park next. Um, and then just basically what a resilient hub looks like, um, about the project, how it would operate. These are next, next. Uh, community resource center, some of the amenities that would be there that are needed desperately in Valley West. Next, these are some of the partners that we've already engaged with. Next, 
Uh, we've identified three parcels. I'm going to go through this quickly. Laurel Tree Charter School at the end of Valley West, the second parcel next. Um, they're building a new school in McKinleyville, so uh, it's going to take some time before these sites are vacated. Laurel Tree has uh, two sites out here in Valley West, the former Montessori school. Next, next. <laughs> anyway, uh, just some site maps. Next, next. And this is a blueprint that was designed uh, by students at Cal Poly Humboldt for the Laurel Tree. Next. Um, and then this tells you a little bit more about that. Next. This is the second potential site. Next. Potential site three. This is the one that I'm super excited about. It's the old woodworkers union. It abuts the the playground, uh, Valley West Park, where the basketball court is also. And I am so excited to say that the city has secured this. So whether it will be a resource center, I think it's going to be a hub of everything. So park and recreation pop-ups, maybe a little mini library. It could be a food pantry, a resource center, a resilient hub. Um, let your mind go wild. Next. Um, and then just some things that we we wrote a second grant for $100,000, the build and design. We would like to make this so that during a time of power outage, we can operate off grid. So we talked about some solar paneling, did research, hot water solar, uh, heat pumps, community garden. Um, we're hoping to um, partner with um, Cal Poly Humboldt and CCAT, uh, Center for Appropriate Technology for a Rainwater Catchment System, just as two of our local schools here in Arcata have done. Next, uh, Arcata House Food Pantry uh, has been proven an essential resource, but unfortunately, due to not having an indoor space, they're not going to be able to continue the program past September. So hopefully the Woodworkers Union can fill in that gap. Uh, and then, yeah, just talking about food pantry and how we would fund that. Next, next. Uh, another picture of food pantries. Next. Uh, volunteer resources, AmeriCorps, College Corps, Cal Poly Humboldt internships. Next. And possible funding sources. Next. Again, funding sources. Next, next. <laughs> and I just want to talk about, uh, we're looking at a slide that says level the playing field yes yes all right so yeah just kind of just going to go over we would really like to have a dedicated valley west uh police officer as we have in the past a community bathroom access to drinking water improved roads improved transportation a community center community garden a dog park for our unleashed friends um i had to take my great dane popper in the car and drive to the marsh every day. I would love it if I could just park that car and walk around the corner. Our unhoused neighbors, uh, we need to help them. It's a heavy lift for just one neighborhood. Next. So again, I just wanna bring you to my favorite quote. It is not possible to be in favor of justice for some people and not be in favor of justice for all people. Next. Thanks to the community, Valley West will shine like the gem it is meant to be. Next. These are some of the Kuna events and more to come. Next. This is what community looks like. This is at Carlson Park at one of our events. Next. Help make Valley West, Valley Best. Next. And I'd like to thank everybody, our community, those that have come here today, uh, my Kuna co-coordinators, Campaneras, uh, Eva Romero and Laura Munoz, uh, community volunteers and advocates, local businesses and community organizations, uh, fierce advocate Lucy Salzar and also executive director of Cumbre Humboldt, uh, Coalition for Responsible Transportation, helping us with our transportation assessment. Uh, Genevieve Serna from the Transportation Safety Committee has done volunteer work and created those wonderful uh, pie charts for our disaster preparedness and resilience. Cal Poly Humboldt for Valley West Digital Notebook, City of Arcata, and of course, our Arcata City All-Female Council. And that's all I've got. That's fantastic, Kimberly. You made it through your slides. And I did. I have no idea how. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk quickly. It was 178. <clears throat> um, it looks like we have some questions in the chat. I'm going to try to see how my uh, 
technology is and see what we can do. Well, John Filsey, I didn't probably screen, screen that up. Any sense of the changes that will result from the university taking over several motels for student housing? Sounds like they're only going to use one this year. That is exactly the case. It will be the Comfort Inn is my understanding. Originally, they were going to take four, including the Ramada Inn over by uh, Lazy J. Um, but apparently they have overestimated the enrollment and it looks like their problem is solved, at least for now. And of course, that means they don't have as many students coming as they anticipated. Or that people have found housing some way, somehow. Ah, good. Okay. Uh, the restroom projected for Carlson Park, there will be funds to keep them clean and safe? Question mark from question from Lori. That's a really good question. Um, and I would assume that that would be part of, yes, I yes, I'm going to say yes. Of course, our environmental services department has a plan for that. And the public uh, buses running through Valley West, do we know there's an occupancy demand to add more runs or not? And how often are they going right now? Um, not often enough. Um, you know, we need not just for Valley West, but all of Arcata, uh, um, more bus stops, more frequent bus stops. Um, I tried to ride the bus and I say tried. I, I did it for a semester. I decided to fill in some gaps in my education, went back to Cal Poly Humboldt. And, um, you know, knowing that if I got a parking permit, it would just be a license to hunt for one. So I rode the bus, but I have a fused ankle. And I quite often didn't get where I needed to go or I was late because with my being slow with my my ankle and, and not enough frequent bus stops and not getting me where to go, I finally threw in the towel by the end of the semester and the following semester, I drove my car. So um, we need more. Um, I am really excited about um, Mad River Transit Service now being regional with Humboldt Transit Service. And I'm sure that that would be a question that our city liaison, Alex Stillman, could uh, answer better than I could. And KS Garda said, so impressive. And Meredith said, need to jump into another meeting. Great job, Kim. Oh. And Joanne McGarry said, emergency pre preparedness for all. CUNA and North America set the model for all of Arcata. Kudos to you, Kimberly, for your incredible le leadership and an advocacy for your North Arcata community. This has been a wonderful presentation. And I would add on to that. That's been fantastic. You really have put you and the others working with you and the rallying the community around you have put um, Valley West and that area on the map. And the map, the fact out. that you've been able to corral all the people, including ones on the other side of 101, um, Ocean West, for example. I mean, it's it's been amazing what you've been able to do and to get the funding and the city council um, deserves a big, you know, congratulations for helping you get the funding you need too and giving you the support. You know, I'm I'm super excited. And as I said, it takes a village. If it wasn't for, uh, you know, city staff, city council, um, advocate Lucy Salazar, uh, to be honest, um, when I moved here in 2004, I attended a lot of visioning workshops, like I think a half dozen at least over the years, and nothing came to fruition. And I, I kind of got burned out and kind of threw in the towel, actually. Um, and, and Lucy put a fire under me and said, you can't give up. You got to fight for your community. And um, she has been a mentor all along for me. And um, yeah, there's no stopping us now with CUNA, the community city council. Um, you don't have to live in Valley West to care about Valley West. And we appreciate everybody who's been stepping up, including our local businesses, uh, Lazy J, uh, Senior Mobile Home Park, River Community Homes. The list goes on. And I apologize for those that I have forgotten. You know, we need to have an effort similar to what you've been doing in Valley West for the Creamery District. Yes. Yeah. And the yes. issues around the the park and whether to put a street through and what we'd really like to have that look like. I mean, you uh, the the basic uh, the they have done a lot of events over there, but there's nothing compared to what they could do. 
right. if the community, if they had someone rallying them like you and, and Kuna have done and others in the neighborhood have done to make that also a major community hub. And, and, and just to put a plug, um, and you probably know more about this than I do, Jane, but there is a community meeting tomorrow at the Creamery for uh, residents to let their voices be heard. I might mention that Kuna started off as a project for co with Cooperation Humboldt. We really wanted to bring art and culture to Valley West, so we had an opportunity to become a project of Playhouse Art. So we, um, yeah, I have a passion for the Creamery District. That's our fiscal sponsor now. That's fantastic because it really makes a huge difference. And they are also, yes, tomorrow at, I believe, six o'clock, um, there will be a one and a half hour meeting. There's signs posted all over the place. Go to the Playhouse for that meeting. And we had like 70 people there last time a couple of weeks ago. And we'd like to see more of you there and bring your ideas and suggestions for what you'd like to see happen in that area because the gateway project is a major change to that whole area. And if you want to have your ideas incorporated in its design, now's the time because they're making decisions right now. Right. Do we and have any other voices be heard? That, letting your voice be heard is how community transformation begins. So go attend. And Joanne says, McGarry says, yes, Creamery District needs to be not only historically preserved, but built into a vital hub near the downtown area. And let's see, she also said emergency pre preparedness for all Kuna and North America are set the model for all of Arcata. I think I read that before. Um, Sherry, Kimberly, you are a city treasure. You are unstoppable. Thanks for the inspiration. Um, I phoned whoever that is. Thank you for everything you do for Arcata. One correction to the meeting starts at 5.30. That's what uh, I thought. Okay, 5.30, not 6. Sorry, I screwed up. That's if you okay. want to learn about more about that meeting, go to arcata1.com uh, uh, or email fred, fred at arcata1.com, I do believe. Um, fred Weiss is fantastic. He's been a major force behind trying to get the community engaged. Others have been involved as well. Um, and I want to thank them all. And next week, by the way, we'll be talking about addressing homelessness in our community with Darwin Spore, Executive Director of the Arcata House Partnership. We hope to see you all there. And I'm sure they'll be talking a little bit more about what's going on in Valley West. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions? Yes, no? Then thank you ever so much. Kimberly, that was a wonderful presentation. We'll look forward to seeing you all next week and maybe a bunch of you tomorrow at 5.30 at the Playhouse. Should thank be good. You. Take care now. Bring your ideas and your concerns. <laughs> we wanna have more participation in that whole discussion as well. And we haven't had enough. Absolutely. Uh, while this whole process has been going on and, and we're working hard to um, get more community involvement. So yeah, and, and just to idea. piggyback on that, you know, if Valley West have would have given up, the changes that we're seeing now would not have come to fruition. So no matter what neighborhood you're in, I'll be whether it be the, the creamery, the bottoms, Samoa Boulevard, wherever that, whatever that looks like for you, let your voices be heard, get up get to city council meetings, get involved in organizations, join a committee, get on a board, get on a commission, because uh, change is possible and transformation is there waiting for you. But if they don't hear from you, it's not going to happen. Right. And, they, and, and Kimberly was on the planning commission, then she moved to city council. And, and thanks to all the people that have supported her to do that, because it has made a huge difference. So we invite you all to do that. And hope to see more of you there tomorrow afternoon at 5.30. Happy Monday. Hey, Kimberly, do go. Okay. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.